ان الحمد لله تعالى الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده 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 لا شريك له لا شريك له لا مثل له لا ضد له لا ند له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا وسندنا وطبيبنا وطبيب ارواحنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي ارسل بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تنكه المراه لاربع خصائص لحسنها او لجمالها لنسبها لدينها او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام respected brothers and sisters in the gathering assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh first things first is this chair is very comfortable if i fall asleep do wake me up secondly alhamdulillah we've got so many brothers the masjid is absolutely full and we've got so many sisters is either everyone in oldham is married or is either people are not bothered um, and people who want to get married again maybe in this seminar i don't know what the reason is but don't worry inshallah it's not quantity we're after we're after quality um this topic was allocated to me uh, over the phone two weeks ago i didn't really know i was going to speaking i was going to be speaking on this topic however i had a conversation with monla akmal and he said well we kind of talked about it. yes he did but i didn't know anyhow i've not prepared anything because this topic is so vast so vast i've learned things through experience now the guys who are not married here or the sisters who are not married and who have come to this seminar alhamdulillah count yourself very fortunate because there was a time when we were getting married and wallah we didn't have anyone to speak to or anyone to advise us so in my situation and i'm not shame or i'm not shyful about it at least 30 proposals came for me some said i was fat some said oh he's got a beard some said why isn't he wearing a suit and a tie my father kept on arguing he's a molana he doesn't wear these kind of things he's got a beard because he's a alim of deen and the rest of it so alhamdulillah through experience all the way from 2004 in 2006 alhamdulillah i got married now what a wonderful thing it was for me um the reason why it was wonderful was because I've never experienced any relationship so I ever had anyone who said to me I love you and I haven't been in a position to say to anyone I love you so I didn't know what I was getting into now for me that worked in my favor and alhamdulillah because if you don't know what biryani tastes like and someone makes you a dish and says this is biryani and you like it you don't know any better so that's how marriages work Now in our situation uh, I'm sure a lot of people situation here is probably the same however the british government and the home office did a piece of work around islamic marriages and there was a lot of people who were being forced into marriages and I did a piece of work and a piece of piece of research for the home office and at the end after researching and after collecting all this information we came down to three possible solutions for marriage in islam the category a is the first category of marriage is a forced marriage where the parents say you have to get married here you don't have any choice or chance you get married so you don't get to say anything that form of marriage is not permissible it's haram so if the individual doesn't consent and he's been forced to get into marriage that kind of relationship will start off negative end up negative and the disaster that will happen after that which will obviously cause divorce so if you if i went 20 years ago a lot of the marriages were happening like that because people didn't know any better then another form of marriage came which was love marriage so first you get to know someone you date them in a halal way and then it becomes haram then you try to phone them you try to contact them social media anything you do you put it on whatsapp 
any food you make, you take Instagram and put it on the Instagram and your relationship develops. Before you get married, there's been 100, equi 100 times and 100 situations where you come under, where you argue with that person. But because you're so, so fixated in this marriage or you feel so fixated in this love or lust, although you see so many problems, even you get married, even before you get married, still you just ignore them. And you think, don't worry, let me get married to her. Or she thinks, oh, don't worry, let me get married to him. I'll sort him out, I'll sort her out. Living in hope for potential development of a marriage on situations which you have seen before marriage. That doesn't work either. Anyhow, that love marriage starts off haram, then parents get involved, and then the parents agree, and then they do a seminar, and uh, or they do um, a function, uh, at the grand venue, pay thousands of millions of pounds and they get them married and all everyone is happy and then that haram relation becomes halal. So that's a love marriage. And the third one is arranged marriage. Now for people like us, Alhamdulillah, we've been fortunate and we've gone down the route. In Islam, the only marriage which is permissible is the arranged marriage. So what happens? So you're a young man, you're a young lady, your parents have told hundreds of people in the community Oh, can you look for a girl for me? Uh, my son needs to get married. Oh, can you look for a boy for me? I want to get my daughter, daughter married off. And then people would look. People have got cousins. People have got friends who are looking for spouses. And then the families will come together. They will have an opportunity to meet each other's family. And then you will be allowed to talk to the woman that who may be your potential wife. Or the woman will have the ability to talk to a man who will be her potential husband. And that is arranged to the family. That is the one which we will class as sunnah. And that is the one that we are recommending. So we're not recommending forced marriages at all. We categorically say it's haram. What we are recommending is an arranged marriage where the families bring both of you together and then you can spend some time and understand him or understand her in a way which is kind of secret but inshallah you get to know each other. And after then you are allowed to tell your parents or whoever what you think of the opposite side or what you think of the potential wife or husband to be. That's the marriage that we want. Now how does this happen? So... If I take Muhammad as an example, he's 25 years old. Alhamdulillah, he's been worked for, working for two years. He's got sufficient amount to get married. Now his father is looking for him to get married as soon as possible. However, when you talk about age, what age is right to get married in? I would recommend from the age of 24 for a male, 23 for a female. 22, 23 for a female. 24 for a male, they should start to look for rishtas. If someone feels the urge that they need to get married before that, they should get married if you cannot control your carnal desires. So that is something very, very important. Now what happens? Obviously, your parents will be talking to other parents or will come to Compass Learning Center and give you a bio data. What will they give? Biodata. Have you got a biodata, brother? Have you already married? So you've not come for second marriage. Shalom, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So biodata tells a person on the other side who this person is, how many siblings does he have, father, mother, where they're from in this country and in Bangladesh, and also tells them what kind of employment the person is in. So the parents are constantly trying. Huh? To find you a good rishta for yourself. Now, Alhamdulillah, some people are very lucky. The first rishta comes, they say Alhamdulillah and they get married. Some people like me are very unlucky and get knocked back and also knocked back. Um, 30, 40 rishtas will come. My strong, strong, strong recommendations to you is, brother, no one is 100%. Or oh, sisters, no one is 100%. Someone may look good. However, internally, he may not be well. Someone may be rich, may not look that handsome. None of us, Allah has made us in a such a way, none of us are 100% the right person, or none of, our, none of, none of us are 100% 
excellent in all categories. Agreed or disagreed? Agreed. This brother does agree. No, huh? <laughs> ah, mashallah. Anyone disagree? Everyone, everyone, literally everyone will have at least 8 out of 10. Even the queen, even the queen out of 100%, she won't be there 100%. Okay? I'm going to see the queen on Thursday, inshallah. I'll tell you if she's 100% or not 100%. Ah. So, if you set your level at that level, I'm not 100%. My family is not 100%. However, if I look for 100% constantly, what's going to happen? You can wait for the cows to come home, but you won't be married. Compromise. Compromise. So the first very important ingredient for a successful marriage is compromise. You compromise before you even start. Now, the thing is, beauty is a different thing. Beauty, in the eyes of m myself, may be someone... Who is fair without fair and lovely? Who is fair without Debenham's makeup? But for someone else, it may be someone who is not fair. Maybe they're like the tan look. It's different for everyone. I'll show you an experience. I went to Birmingham once and um, my father was getting sick and tired of me because all my siblings, all my brothers and sisters, my dad said, Here, my brothers and sisters agreed. For me, they went through hell. But that's not because of me being fussy. That's because they were fussy themselves. So I went to Birmingham. And I was sick by that time. I had seen enough. And then I got the chance to see my future potential wife. I sat next to her. I didn't even reach her shoulders. That's how tall she was. But because out of fear... What did I say to my parents? Alhamdulillah. I said to my parents, Alhamdulillah. But then when I was driving back and he was keep on knocking me, I was sitting down, I couldn't reach her shoulder. What was to happen if she was to punch me once in the morning, once in the evening? <laughs> huh? So then when I came back home, I told my sister, I don't think that's going to happen. My dad said, not again. So anyhow, if I wasn't honest to myself then, and I got married, and then she beat me up in the morning and the evening, who do I go and tell? That's literally the thought I had. So don't be pressurized in it. Yes, you are not 100%, I'm not 100%. The person you are going to get married for, don't look for 100%, because if you were to do that, you'd keep on wasting time. So what is it that you need to look at? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you need to look for four things. Number one, her beauty. What do you look for? Her beauty. Now, so many people say, oh, my mother chose her. I didn't even look at her. My mother's happiness is my happiness. Absolutely bull. Mm. <laughs> that is absolutely wrong. Because when you wake up in the morning... And you look to your left and you think, oh my God, who's this dinosaur? <laughs> Let me tell you, you will have to live with this dinosaur for the rest of your life. When you go outside, if you feel like you have to put a black bin bag over her head. Because you're ashamed. And at the time when you were asked, you said, no, my mother's chosen, my father's chosen, she must be good. Don't be befooled. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Look at her beauty. For her, look at his beauty. Are we both compatible? So that's very important. Physical attraction needs to be there. Now for someone like me, I tell you straight, I don't like thin women. That's my personal choice. However, that is something that I looked out for. Because I don't feel attractive to narrow Thin women. That's my just personal choice. The reason why I'm talking like you to you in this manner is I want you to explore this when you get married. So be honest as possible. Be respect, respectful so the other party doesn't get offended. If you don't like them, be honest. So Rasulullah said, look at the beauty. Now obviously, 
if you've been to a restaurant you've had biryani you have you had sikh chops you've had everything on the menu before you got married it's very hard it's very hard to satisfy you because you know you've been through the trend you've been through 10 relationships and now someone's telling you what would you like to eat you're bored by that so the person who is successful in marriages who looks for personal attraction in the other side or in the other the person that they are going to be related to then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said look at her nasab look at her family background now in the arabs that was a culture for us the family background needs to be good now like i've said not 100% of my family background is all dindar, praying five times a day, fasting during the month of Ramadan, doing all the necessities, going for Hajj twice a year. Just checking if you're awake. So, dindar as well as equivalent to you. The reason why I say this is some people are, mashallah, very, very dindar. And they expect the same level of dindar in their wife. It's a good thing. If you can find someone like that, it's a good thing. Alhamdulillah. But at the same time, some people are not 100% practicing themselves. If they want their wife to be 100% practicing, and they're not practicing themselves, there will be a conflict. So be realistic in what you are looking for. So Alhamdulillah, we want someone who tries to practice the religion and deen and we want them to be at a similar level to us and then work on deen together both of you and always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses that couple who tries to acquire the love of Allah, love of Allah through marriage the family background his brothers, sisters in law side someone is a drug addict so this family is no good what nonsense when we go and dig inside and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig we are about to find problems in the family yet again if you are going to be nitpicking you will end up in the situation where you can't find a perfect person so you have to nitpick not to the extent where you become silly look at the family background Generally, are these people okay in society? Are they respected in society? Alhamdulillah, if they're like 10, 10 families, Alhamdulillah, go forward. Don't worry about the rest of it. Number three is her deen. I've talked about her deen. I've talked about his deen. How much of expectation is it? Now, you are someone who doesn't read five type namaz. You chill out as much as you want. But you want the wife to go out in niqab. You want the wife when you come home, she should just be doing salam and ready for you. Huh? You want all that. But when you look at yourself, you're not that dindar yourself. So look at these things. Inshallah, if you look at these things, what are you doing? You're creating good recipe for a good curry. If you don't look at these things, you will lose out and you will fail. So these are the things which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us, look for them specifically. Now before you get married, in an arranged marriage setting, when your families go to meet each other and give you the opportunity to talk to the other side, that is the time when you have to spend in investigating her and that is the time when she has to spend with you investigating what your background is. So, a little bit of privacy is needed. In Islam, ulama e are here, I would recommend how I got married, I would not want my daughter to get married like that. Because, wallah, literally I had five minutes to speak to my wife. And then I got married. Alhamdulillah, well, it worked very well for me. But in today's society, that will not be accepted. You need to take time and you need to talk. Now, how can you talk when you've got the mother's... Uh, sorry, how can you talk when you've got the wife's mother standing on her head? What do you ask her? You'll be so shy. So you need a situation where you comfort, comfortably speak to her. 
and you should allow for her to speak to you. And in that conversation, you should be able to be in a position to make a decision, is this the right person for me? So what do you ask about her? Are you wearing makeup? Huh? What is it that you ask? What's your name? Aisha Khanum. What do we ask? Farooq Mia? Have you been in this situation? Subhanallah. So when you go inside, there should be you and your potential wife or potential husband and to fit the Sharia criteria, there should be someone else there. Someone who doesn't understand what you're talking about. So if there's a daddy on each side, that's well and good. You butter away in English and the daddy says, mm hmm, tiga se. Or a little sister or a little brother. Okay? And then you start the conversation. Obviously ask help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you start the conversation. So what is that you converse? What do you talk about? You talk about habits and akhlaq and adat. You talk about yourself. You give a brief introduction about who you are and you what you are looking for. What your hobbies are, what your interests are. How do you deal in when you are very, very angry? How do you deal financially? What is your expectation after you get married? Direct to the point, no flirting, no showing off that I'm Mr. Cool. Direct to the point and then after talking to her, if you feel you should only talk to the woman if you're first physically attracted. Not if you're 5 and 10% attractive. If you're 5 and 10% attractive, respectfully do salam, respectfully sit down, one, two questions and walk out. That's finished. But if you are physically attracted to her and you sincerely think that this could be a potential for me, sit down and ask her all these questions. How would you want to live after you get married? And she should be very honest with you. Can you cook? Would you want to work? Where do you work now? So get the conversation rolling. Get her to understand where you are coming from. What kind of ideas you have about a married life. Get her to understand what is it that you are thinking of about a married life. Ask her how serious are you about getting married. And then let her ask you the question. So if she says to you that inshallah after I get married, I've spent 20 years in education, I would want to work. Now if you've got a family, who is very very religious and won't allow her to work let her know that no after marriage you can't work be very honest by being honest what will happen inshallah at the end of that conversation she will know where she stands you will know where you stand so inshallah if you have after doing that conversation you walk away you don't have to tell your parents there and there you can walk away think about it dwell on it and see would you like to would you want to meet her again if you want to meet her again then by all means please try to arrange that some people have three four five sessions before they get married now i know it's very difficult within our culture to do that however if you're not 100 percent sure of what you are wanting or what's happening please do ask don't be forced into a situation where you regret it afterwards <coughs> so these are the very important things now, there is one thing I am going to be honest with, physical attraction, Dr. the physical attraction needs to be there. However, if you're going to look for, what's that Bollywood actress called? Oh, the by size, one. Cholo, I forgot her name. Thank you. Ah, if you're going to look for Mrs. Rai, are you with me? And she's not Mrs. Rai, say, and the reality is, if you're going to base what you're looking for in your spouse to be like Ashwara Rai and she's not like Ashwara Rai, you failed before you've entered the door. What physical attraction is, it's not just the looking beautiful. So many times you get married to a person. Now, the world can say, oh my God, she's so dark. Oh my God, she's like this. To that. 
what you think is beautiful that's what matters forget what the world thinks so your physical attraction may be different to your mother's different to your father's you need to be thinking clearly now with physical attraction that only lasts for 6 months how many months 6 months after 6 months when the reality kicks in you don't think about the physical attraction what you think about is when you come late at half past 11 and she's got a face on and you've been working instead of welcoming you in home she gives you dirty looks and her akhlaq is so poor then you will tell me the physical attraction has gone out through the window more important than physical attraction I would say is her akhlaq her characteristics <coughs> her mannerisms so yes physical attraction is important but it's not a priority. Fast food bizati deen, her priority is her religion. Inshallah, a woman who's got a religion, inshallah, she will be able to be a successful wife, a successful mother. Equally, a person, a father who has got good characteristics and akhlaq, he will be able to be a good husband and a good father. So these are the very, very important basics of getting married. After that, when a Muslim gets married to another Muslim, it's not just the individual who get married to each other. Ideally, it's you're marrying into the whole family. So find out the adats and akhlaq about the family. See what the family is like. See how they uh, act in society. Do your own research. It is absolutely permissible to do research on the family that you want to get married to. So these are very very important things after you've got married. Now after you get married, you seem to find out that conversation that you had first, some of it is in line, some of it will go out of line. Don't say to her or the woman don't say to the man at that time, you said this, you said this, it's not like this, you're not like this. When the reality hits, life is different. And that is the moment where we need to be very very clear. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is, in a married life, every single couple, like I said, no one is 100%, every single couple would go through ups and downs. Okay? Some days it will be happy, some days it will be sad. That's what we call kabhi khushi kabhi? No idea. Kabhi khushi, kabhi gham. Sometimes happy, sometimes sadness. That's a reality of life. If you want khushi 100 times, 100% 100 every day, morning khushi, lunch time khushi, evening khushi, even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa didn't have that. So as individuals, you will quarrel, you will argue. But always remember, by the end of the day, whatever you have argued about, it should finish. If it doesn't finish, that means something is wrong in your relationship. You should never let an argument roll over to the next day because the shaitan would work on that and shaitan will work on that to such an extent which will make your life a hell. The most, one of the most depriving thing in the Muslim community is in the last 10 years, out of 10 marriages, how many marriages go through divorce? There was a survey done. A good 4-5 marriages will go through divorce. You know why? Because tolerance level are so down. Oh, he came in, he did salam to his mother, not to me first. And he does it every time. Mufti Zaba want to divorce. Oh, I was ill. And his mother was ill. He took his mother to the doctors and the hospital straight away. When I asked him, he said to me, you know English, you've got a car, just go. I want to divorce. He loves his mother more than me. Petty, petty reasons, petty, petty reasons. And this has become normal for people. The tolerance level has come down so much within our society. Always remember, out of all the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal, the most hated thing which Allah has made halal is divorce. Now, nowadays, there's people who get slightly angry and the wife instigates divorce. Come on then, come on then. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Give me divorce, give me divorce. So he thinks like a superman. Ja! I give it to you, And then he sits down.
کی صاحب ایسے طلاق پوائٹن سے طلاق ڈز ہی مٹر دا اماؤنٹ آف پیپل اللہ اکبر فون می آن لٹل لٹل ایکسکیوسز ٹو سیو دم سیلف فرام طلاق ناؤ طلاق از اے سچ اے تھنگ وین اٹس ہیپن اٹس لائک اے بلیٹ سو اف آئی ہیڈ تھری بلیٹس اینڈ اف آئی شاٹ اے بلیٹ کین آئی ریورس دیٹ بلیٹ بیک Or once it's been fired, it's been fired. Always remember talaq is the same. So people who are giving talaq left, right and center, then they put their hand on the head and they're trying to make ways and excuses. Well, I didn't really mean it. Remember, talaq in all circumstances will be accepted. The guy came to me and said, Mufti Sahib, she wound me up so much, so much, so much. I was so angry, so angry, so angry. I said, talaq, talaq, talaq. I said to him, does anyone give talaq when they're happy? Eh? So she said, he said, no. This other woman phoned me and she said, he was angry and he pushed me. So I said, go and then give me talaq. So he gave me three talaq. Mutsa, what shall I do now? Remember, talaq is like a bullet. Once it's fired, it's fired. There's no turning back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates talaq. And the arsh and the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shakes when a person gives talaq. So under no circumstances, even if she's angry, even if she's insti instigating talaq, move away from her, don't give her talaq. Talaq is only, only, only then when there is no way when this relationship will succeed. That's the last point. But unfortunately, we make it our first point. So these are the things that we need to safeguard ourselves from. Alhamdulillah, the Compass Matrimony site is up and running and we get thousands of people who put the biodata through us. Now the advantage of giving us biodata is we know about who's looking for what and we can make an assumption this might be a good match for this person and we're trying to help people. So on the back of that, Alhamdulillah, this marriage seminar was set up and inshallah all you brothers who are not married Inshallah, it's a platform for you to take experience from and Inshallah, we will help you to deliver that.